Okay, so uh, before starting with the program, let's understand exception mechanism, how it works in Java. So, uh, Java programming environment have a package called as java.lang, right? Let me open up a notepad here. Now import java lang dot star will import all the classes in the lang package. Now this is the class from which all the classes which are going to we are going to use while dealing with the exceptions are inherited. So this is the base class of all the exceptions in Java throwable. And uh, as uh, like this lang package is available to all the Java programs, even if we are not importing them. So I'm not going to really write any import statement for the first dot Java application in which we will see how the exception works. But what we have to understand is uh, Java dot lang dot throwable is the class from which all the exception handling classes in the Java environment are inherited. So this is the base class for the exceptions, right? Now. Uh, Let's go to the paint in which we will understand how it works. So let's say, assume that you have a code, you have developed application. You have developed application and you have code and your application have uh, sub parts inside. Like say, this is the class. Assume this is the class that you have. And in this class, you have sub methods like, uh, let me pick up something. Okay, fine. Method one, huh. this is the method two, then the method three and so on. So you have such methods in your program, many methods, one, two, three, and so on. You keep on adding the methods in the program. Also your class have a main method from which the execution has started. So he, this is the main method, which is calling these methods one by one. So main method may call the first method at a one time, then the main may call the third, and the main may call the third method. There might be a different type of executions like you, you have called the second method from the main, and the second method is calling the third or second Sorry, third or fourth method. It is also possible that this fourth method is again second method, right? So there are possibilities in which these methods can call each other, which are inside a class. And we can't predict that how the programmer will have a full control on authority that how these methods are going to interact with each other, which method is going to call which method, and so on. Now, let's say that your application is huge. You have uh, thousands of methods in your application. And certainly the application is not generating the expected result or application is providing the results, which are uh, garbage. In that case, it is a tough job for the programmer to identify the exact pain point and go and resolve it. For example, Let's say that this, this is the class in which we have right now four methods. Main is the one. And let's say that main method has called this second method. And second method have called this fourth method. Something went wrong here. In the fourth method, I, something went wrong and the program abruptly stopped functioning. Now, from the early lectures of data structures, uh, we all know that the, there is a program stack. There is a program stack. The stack keeps track of who is under execution. Who is under execution? Let me start that stack. So assume this is the program stack. And now we know that the main method is the entry point. And let's say the main method has called the second method. I'll write here second. And this second method in turn have called the fourth method. So here the execution is under method. Right. So some 
went wrong in the fourth method and the program execution abruptly terminated. Now assume that if this fourth method is successfully executed, if this fourth method has successful execution, the programmer have made another call to the third method. But this call to the third method will execute only if this call to the fourth method is executing successfully, which is not, which is terminating abruptly. Now it is job of the programmer to find out what happened and solve that error, right? Now, when programmer starts tracing the program from the main method, he has to debug entire code of the main, then he has to check the entire code of second, and he knows now that from the second code, you are going to the fourth method, and here something has went wrong, <coughs> right? But actually your entire application is representing some exception that okay there is some problem in this application an exact pain point in this application is method number four <coughs> sorry now this is even a quite simple environment or simple example let me pick up the another example let's let's keep this as it is. Uh, let me open up the other instance of the paint and in this what i'll do is Suppose this is your main program and this is the library that you are calling and from this library again you are calling something like right? this is the, your application. So let's say that you have a main method here, another method here and the method. This method is referencing a library. So here is a method in the library. And again, it is calling something else. So you have interlinking, right? And something went wrong here. Something went wrong here. Here, something happened. So you'll send back here. And from here, you are going to come to the second method. Let's say this is the first. This is the second. Sorry, this is the third method. So you come back all together to the third method. Now, Look at the programmer's job. He has to find out where is the problem, whether the problem is in the first one, whether it is in the second one, or whether it is in the third one. If it is in the third one, you're calling a library function, which again you have developed. So whether this is creating the problem, if it is not, then check out the third, uh, third library that you again created, whether the problem is here or what. So it is kind of a, if I have to prefer a word, uh, Marathi or a Hindi word to call it as it is like an a khichdi where lots of lots of uh, small small balls are there and you have to pick up the exact ball which is creating the problem which is making your kitchen not worthy right if you find the technical word people use or not a technical or non-technical word people use it for this is spaghetti like you have a lot of things coming together and something went wrong and now it is the programmer's duty to find out where the exact problem is and then solve that problem so to deal with the such situations people have designed and developed the exception handling like to make the programmer's job simple, if something went wrong in the program, the program must be able to find out the exact pinpointed uh, error at a program and then the programmer should be able to go to that particular point and solve this. Right. Now, uh, we know that the errors, like generally speaking, the error we call of two types. One is, <clears throat> Compile time error. With this one, compiler deals. And we also know that there is a second type of error. And the second type of error is right, run time error. And now when you are making these calls from the first method to the second method, the error is occurring at the runtime. So when your application is executing, that time something is going wrong and your application is terminati terminating. Now when these runtime errors are occurring, we call these runtime errors as exceptions. Compile time errors, which will occur at a compile time, the compiler reports them, the programmer takes a precautionary action. These are mainly related to syntax. Compile time errors are pointing at syntax. Whereas runtime errors are not pointing at syntax, they are pointing at semantics of the program or logical problems, right? 
So compile time error checks with the syntax, runtime errors or the exceptions deal with the semantics of the program. Now, runtime errors are also having types inside them. The exceptions also have type. For example, checked exceptions and unchecked exceptions. Checked and unchecked. And unchecked. Let's say this is unchecked exception. We also have something called as error in this. So now here is a time of cut, uh, cut, like compile time is also error. Runtime is also error. Runtime errors, we call it as exception, which again have types inside them, which is checked exception, unchecked exception, and again error. So let's understand this hierarchy. Checked exceptions are the one that programmers can predict that this may happen and deal with it and write a proper code. Unchecked errors are like, okay, code is right and something went wrong because of programmer's mistake. That is going to happen because of unchecked error, unchecked exceptions. The good example of a checked exception is like you are dealing with the file handling and you may, you know that something may go wrong with the file and you handled it, right? So that we can be counted into a checked exception. Whereas let's say you are, uh, you are depending on the person, uh, like your application is expecting someone to pass an input to you and you know that, okay, this input is supposed to have this kind of uh, data or let's say this input is supposed to have uh, two datas inside them. And, but the by mistake, the person who is sending you a data through the program again, sends only one piece of a data and the second piece of a data is missing and you are waiting for that second piece of a data. But when, when you uh, like uh, try to access that second piece of a data, the data is not present and the exception occurred. So it is like unchecked exception, right? And then finally comes an error. Like what is an error? Uh, error, let's say something happened to the hardware. For example, let's say you are trying to open up a file and disk IO error happened. Now, nobody can do with anything. Like, let's say your hard drive failed. Huh? You have two storage devices. One is your main drive in which program is running. And you want to let you plugged in a pen drive. And from that pen drive, you want to access the file. But the pen drive failed. And you have written a code which is reading from a pen drive. Now, code is fine. Code is perfect. Operating system is working fine. Java is fine. Everything is fine. But the device, hardware device, which is a USB stick, it has failed. Because USB stick failed, your program is, will, be not, will not be able to read from the USB disk. And ultimately, the application fails. Now, this application failure can't be controlled by programmer in any case. Like programmer may write a full-fledged 100% code, which is pinpointed, very right. But because of some hardware failure, because of some device failure, the programmer is not able to deal with it. Then if such kind of exception occurs, we call them as errors. This is an error exception where the programmer really can't do anything to handle it. For very precise explanation, let me use another uh, example. Let's say I am writing a pseudo code to read from a file. I'll write read from a file. So let's say you are reading from a file and here, let's say the code is open file, get the size of the file, then allocate memory to read from file, then read file, actually read the file. And after reading the file, you want to close the file. Let's say you want to open the file and user have passed something, some example, let's say the file is a.txt. Now you expect that this a.txt is available on the disk. If this a.txt is not available, it's an exception. Let's say a.txt is available on the disk, but the disk drive, like a pen drive failed. Now you can't do anything about this line now. Now assume that you opened the file successfully and the now second line is get the size of the file. Because of again hardware failure, let's say your program is not able to determine the file size. Again, this line becomes the failure point. 
apart from let's say the disk drive is very good so you successfully opened the file you got the size of the file then you have to reserve that much memory in your computer to read from the file but your memory your computer is out of memory or your uh, your computer is short of memory and it fails in allocating that much size of the memory to read the file again it's not the programmer's fault it's not the java's fault right now this is not even the pen drive's fault but some some due to some system limitations hardware limitations your program will again fail now this time the hardware failure is there is no enough space available on your computer to allocate to the program so it is beyond the control point of a programmer right so if this kind of environment happens then we call it as an error so it has nothing to do with the compile error compile time error compile time errors are already been removed by the or already been dealt by the programmer because compiler is giving that particular list of what are the errors in the program which are mainly because of syntax program have programmer have solved all those errors and now your application is running and at a run time due to some malfunctioning of the hardware some resource which is available which is expected by the program for the execution that resource is not available now let me use this simple word the your program needs a resource for the execution and that resource simply not available or that resource is not free or that resource is simply failed in either of these three conditions the program is going to stop functioning and there is nothing the programmer can do about it so we are going to refer this kind of exceptions as an error right so any doubt in what is checked unchecked exception and error if you have a doubt please raise the hand or put your question in the chat box if you have understood what is a checked unchecked exception what is error then we'll proceed Anyone have a doubt? Okay. Uh, I will put a question in the polling. You tell me whether what kind of uh, condition is this? Whether this is a checked condition, checked exception condition. Unchecked exception condition, exception condition, or it's an error. So I'm going to put a question in the chat box. Uh, sorry, in the polling, and you are supposed to attend the poll, right? So question is: You will get two minutes to answer this question and the pool is available. Attempt the pool.
So quite a bit mixed response. So good example, right? So listen carefully. Let me close the window. We know that uh, a byte B, like uh, with the eight bits, we the maximum value that we can represent is two fifty five. But if I do B plus plus, and we know that it is true for all the data types, uh, it will come back to the zero, like circulating, right? So if you go to the highest limit of some data type, and if you increment the value by one, you will come back to the lowest value that can be represented by that data type. So in the case of byte, you will come back to the zero. Now this is a normal execution, like what we are incrementing the size of a byte and we are coming from 255 to the zero and that's what is uh, allowed behavior by the programming environment right but let's say that this is the exceptional condition like you have reached the program 255 and by mistake you have forgot to handle okay 255 plus plus uh, the condition shall be uh, denied because the data type is byte and the programmer did not uh, look it into the code carefully so system is not going to warn you system will increase the value by one which will take it to zero because of byte data type so 255 plus one because of the byte data type it will come to the zero and the programmer is expecting let's say programmer is expecting that it should go to the 256 how come let's say you started with the byte value as zero and you are incrementing it by one so zero one two three four five up to 255 it is a normal execution as soon as you increment it by one at the 255 value then because of the byte data type it has to come to the zero and that it will do also like it will come back to the zero but let's say the programmer's logic is expecting the value as 256 now this is a classic example if you put this into the scrutiny data or if you put it into the checked exception then the system will warn you like okay you are doing something wrong and system is not allowing you to do that so that is a checked exception behavior but let's say that system is not warning you of such behavior of the program then we can call it as an unchecked exception so this is the simplest example that i can use to uh, explain you what is a checked and unchecked exception right so the polls are <coughs> sorry so the polls are telling me that you uh, people are really not clear out uh, clear about what is a checked and unchecked exception so uh, <coughs> take it in this way uh, you try to open up a file and you have handled that in your code like if file not found let me say let me go to the notepad let me go to the notepad let's say you want to open up the file let's say this is the code open file and you are passing the file name a dot txt huh and what you you what you do is you do it like this if open file Ah, oh, that means if the open file successful, successfully done, perform the file operation, operation, and if the file opening fails, if the file opening fails, you say that can't open file, right? So you can do it. You can do it, right? So this is this fall under the open uh, check the exception category that you can literally check whether the file is opened or not and then uh, you you can print or you can print the data or you can access the file you can say that can't access the file but let, let me use the another example int there is an array where there are four elements right there are four elements and you somebody access this code as arr of let me call this array as arr and somebody accessed it as arr of 7 now arr is a valid array what is invalid is its index what is invalid is its index and you really can't do anything about it because let's say this is happening because of in variable for integer i is equal to 0 i is less than let's say 10 and i plus plus right and on the next line i'll <clears throat> close the curly bracket and for loop now what will happen is i value is zero and it can be less than 10 so your loop will keep on iterating but there are only four elements in the array and now i i don't have a condition here to write like if array what index 
so i don't know what is going to happen so in this case in this case this exception can't be handled or can't be checked at a execution and this is called as an unchecked exception where the program literally can't have any feature using which he will be able to deal with this the second example for the unchecked is let's say you have a byte array oh sorry not a byte array byte variable ha huh? let's say byte b and it is initialized to it is initialized to 0 and you keep on incrementing let's say b plus plus which is a valid code which is a valid thing like it will take it to the 2 and this is running in a infinite loop this is running in a infinite loop so infinitely b will come to 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 up to 256 time after sorry 255 time and after 255 again it will come back to the 0 right so 0 to 255 again back to 0 this will keep on happening for the infinite time but a normal programmer or the normal execution by end user might be that after 255 when you do 250 uh, b++ it should go to the 256 it's not going to happen now again this is a exception and this is a unchecked exception right if a programmer properly handles this as soon as b++ tries to increment the value beyond 255 then your system has to report a exception your system must report this condition like you already have b is right now equal to 255 and you are trying to increment it by 1 then system must report this right if and it is going to fail because system is the one who is allowing this behavior so this kind of situation we call it as an unchecked exception right unchecked exception it will lead your application into trouble and you have to follow the standard procedure to recover this so unchecked exception whereas you can do much more to handle the conditions which may occur and you know that okay this may happen and so i'll handle this condition with the exception handling classes so checked exception putting this block under checked clause this is the feature by some of the languages if i put this block in the checked condition in this case in this case the application will report the error that you are trying to increment the value of byte variable beyond 255 and it is not permitted if you put this inside checked condition block so checked exceptions which programmer can write a handle about it unchecked exception depends on the data you might be expecting the size of uh, two data and the uh, data sent to you is of only one size and you try to access the second data so you can't really do anything about it and the application simply runs into exception you can handle that but that is a unchecked exception right and the finally error beyond the uh, even controller of a java environment like hardware failure so checked exception unchecked exception and an error okay uh anyone have a doubt i have to put another question in the poll to verify whether we have understood a checked exception or uh, not understood a checked and unchecked exception okay so i'll assume that you have got it there will be another question on the checked and unchecked exception immediately after this <coughs> so the next story so let that let's say that your system is using exceptions to make programmer's life easy or it is your programmer is handling exceptions to make debugging your program easy task so what he does is he puts the program into blocks perspective and he has done exception handling let's say this is the main method this is the 
second method and this is the third method and let's say you are calling them sequentially the main has called a second the second has called a third something went wrong here in the third method and you have now done exception handling so what happens is the program keeps track of this program knows that like you are executing main from main you entered into second and from second you entered into third block and something has went wrong into the third block so you know that and your program if you do exception handling your program will be able to report this will be able to report this like main has called second second has called third which is a stack trace or the program stack this is a program stack your program will be able to report this stack to the user that okay something has gone into the program stack and this was the area in which something has gone wrong like your main from main to second from second to third right so programmer can now know that okay i think there is a third method or the third function which have some trouble inside it and the programmer can go to that particular third block and solve the trouble so let's practically see that how to get this stack out of the program and really solve the problem so let's write a simple program. Let me use class first. And let's say it has a main method. And let's say your class have another method. No, that's fine. Only and integer i is equal to one. A simple divide by exception, which you people have used for many time, and I'll say i is equal to i by k, and we now know that exception is going to come. Now, if I compile this, Java C first dot. Okay. Now if you if you compile this and execute again txt okay Okay, now Java first, if I execute this, here you can say that the exception has occurred and the exception is arithmetic exception. Okay, this is a checked exception. Exception is divided by zero and your exception handling mechanism is giving the exact line at which exception has occurred, which is line number six in the file first.java. And to be very specific, even the method name, which is responsible for this exception. Now, if you check this, Right now we are using only one method in the program. So the exception stack stack has reported only main method. Another point, I am not handling exception here. The programmer is not doing anything, but the system is printing out the problem. What has happened at a runtime? So computer is still taking care of reporting what is a problem during the runtime. And we know that the runtime problem or the error is exception. So system is taking responsibility of handling exception. So again, we have to mark one line, whether programmer does it or whether programmer don't do it. In Java programming environment, there is always exception handling. So if you do it, very good. You are writing a exception handling code, which is a very nice thing. But if you ignore it, still Java environment is going to handle it and it will print out the exact error stack for you. So let me expand the program. Let me add something to it. Let me say I am adding a method called as data, public void data. 
and I'll take this code and I'll put it inside data method. So let me put this code in the data method. Let me remove this from the main method. And now let's call this data method. So new first dot data. Now if you save, compile and execute. Now here you can see that again, exception has been reported by the system. We are not handling the exception. Exception is reported by system. And it is saying that the exception is inside data method line number 10 but it has also reported one more line saying first dot main and line number four so let's start counting line in our notepad file one this is the first line second third and fourth so see what line is pointed by your runtime environment it is saying first dot main and from the main method first dot java fourth line Fourth line is the one which is responsible for taking you to the second line of stack, right? So that's what I mean by the stack. Like from main, you're calling second. So when system, the main method is pushed on the stack. After the main method, the second method is pushed on the stack and the second method is generating some exception. So your Java programming environment is reporting that, okay, from the second method, this line is responsible for the error. But the second method is called by the main method from this line. So that is the output of this, uh, that is the meaning of this line or this output. Like your main method's fourth line is calling data method and data method's 10th line is responsible for the error, right? So this is the meaning of the output. Now if we try it in a different style, let me, let me put some output lines. Let me some put some output lines. Now someone, one may agree that, okay, now the environment is handling exception. Environment is handling exception. So why the programmer is bothered about or should be bothered about handling this? So let's understand why the programmer should be bothered about handling these situations on his own rather than relying on computer's exception handling mechanism. Let me put here the message, the main method of first. And the last line of the main method has to be system.out.println. The last line in main method. Now let's compile this Java C and run. Now you can see that the main method of first is the first line from our, uh, our program, which is printed on the screen. Then we are calling the data method right so the lines which are responsible for calling the data method are printed by the exception stack and we know now where the what is the exact line which has created a problem which is line number 12 but if you see the last line in the main method this output is not available so the complete execution of the program is not done the program has ended abruptly as soon as the exception occurred now let's handle this exception now exception handling can be done by putting out a try and catch block right putting out try and catch block so what we will do is we will say try in the main method and we are making a call to the data method which is generating exception so i'll write here which is the parent class of exception e and here let's use a different style println E. I am printing object, right? So we are now we are using a try and catch block. We all know what is the meaning of a try and catch block from C++. So try is the block in which I am supposed to write the code which may generate exception, and catch is the block which is expected to deal with the exception if it occurred and print out the necessary message for the user. So we are supposed to get some different execution apart from relying on system handled exception mechanism or writing our own exception handling code so right now earlier in the execution we were depend depending on the system to handle the exception now the programmer has put his own code to deal with the exception so let's see whether we see any execution difference so program compiled and i'll see first now you can see that 
the exception message has come in only one line java.lang.arithmetic which is here also java.lang.arithmetic and divide by zero so single message has come but the major change is you are having the first line then the exception here you have the first line then the name of the exception and the last line also so as soon as the programmer handles the exception the program is not ending abruptly program is continuing even if the exception occurs so what has happened is this try block deals with the exception and print out the message what is the exception name and then it continues with the program so the program is not ending abruptly it is continuing with its own execution so that is the main advantage that we are getting by handling the exception <clears throat> now here there is one concern the concern is the default mechanism of the java is printing out the detail exception message like the main method called the data method and in the data method at line number 12 the exception has occurred whereas our current output is printing out only what is the name of the exception so as i said there is a stack and this stack tells us where the exact problem is and right now i'm not printing the stack i am printing only in the name of the exception through the program by sing, simply saying system.out.println print e in java you can print this entire stack execution stack by saying e dot print stack now look at the coding style camel case p character of the print word is small and s character of the stack word is capital so e dot e is object of exception e dot print stack is the code that we are adding now let me put a comment on the system dot outline no need now let's recompile the program uh sorry stack I've used a C sharp syntax. I should say stack trace. So print stack is from the C sharp environment. I have to use print or print stack trace is the actual call. Let me compile again. The program compiled and now let me print. Now here again you get a third output. Now in this third output, you can see that the detailed exception message has occurred come displayed. Like java.lang.arithmetic exception divided by zero the name of the exception which occurred the line which is actually responsible for this exception and the method which called this data method so you are getting the complete stack as well as the exact line as well as the name of the class which is generating the exception not only that the main method first line is been executed which is expected as usual also the last line which was not executing because of the default execution or the default exception handling mechanism has been executed this is the more advantageous position right so this happens now you, you can handle this exception in a different way also like let me cut this try block and put it in a data method and the rest of the code also like catch now here the only thing changed is the exception handling is not done by your main method it is done by the data method so you are handling the exception inside data method and there shall be no change on the execution side like if i execute the program now java first we don't get any execution change again you know that the data method is called by main so the stack remains intact and from the data the line number 23 is the actual code which is responsible for exception and the exception is arithmetic exception the first line of the main method has executed as well as the last line of the main method has executed so that is not going to really change anything what may wonder is like what may happen is let's say you don't have this divide by zero exception here right let me copy this arithmetic exception and let's handle this let me copy instead of exception let me put arithmetic exception still there will be no change in the behavior of the program let me run this right so e.print.stacktrace has been working 
so error has occur exception has occurred we are we have handled that and the program executed right now if something else happens like let's say you have array int array uh, let me say the array name is a and i'll initialize this array with size 1 now we all know that this array have only one location which is 0 i'll initialize zeroth location with 1 and now i will also try to initialize the first location which is not present in the array now right now carefully watch that the program is still printing the main me main method first line and the main methods last line the exception handling has been done but instead of handling the main exception handling class we are handling only specific class which is arithmetic exception right we have done we have handled only arithmetic exception now let me compile and run now the behavior of the program has changed here you can see that right now only the main method first line has executed the exception the thing which is responsible for exception is been printed the thing which is responsible for exception is the index out of exception now array index out of bound the line number 21 which has generated this exception and from main method the program line which called this data method and the last line of the main method is not executed why this happened is the programmer has handled only arithmetic exception whereas the exception occurred is not an arithmetic exception exception occurred is a array index out of bound exception so in this case what can you do is you can chain chain the exception handling mechanism or you can uh, have nested exception blocks or try catch blocks for the for example if i if i do it like this like instead of catch plain catch block i will add one more catch block and here i'll write i'll write exception e and i'll say e dot print tag trace now again the output will change again the main method is executing now what we have done is we have changed the catch blocks check try to execute the try block if the exception occurred of type arithmetic exception the first catch block will handle it if the exception occurred of a type uh, any other thing like i should handle here array index out of bound let me bring this exception back and recompile the program cls now here you can see that the arithmetic exception message has come and the first and last line has been executed so what happened is you call the data method inside data method you declared two variables this line triggered the exception so immediately the catch block the first catch block which is responsible for arithmetic exception got executed and you got an arithmetic exception displayed on the screen now as soon as you displayed arithmetic exception the rest of the code has not executed the rest of the code from the data method has not executed but the main method executed successfully main method executed <coughs> sorry successfully now let's comment this divide by zero block compile the program and then execute again now here you can see that the array index out of bound exception has been handled so what happened is the variable i get initialized a got initialized you are not executing those code so there is no divide by zero error there is no arithmetic exception but you created array of size one you initialize the first location with one which is valid as soon as you try to initialize the second location which is invalid location the new exception of type array index out of bound occur and now the arithmetic exception was not able to handle array index out of bound but the try block have another catch block associated with it with it which is handling the general exception using exception class so this line printed array index of uh, index out of bound exception and the program worked if i if i remove this if i remove this block and if 
I compile it and if I run it again, so you can see that the last line of the main method was executing earlier. Now that has not executed. What happened is your try catch mechanism failed to handle the exception, which is array index out of bound. So you again relied on the Java environment's exception handling mechanism. So as soon as the Java environment's exception handling mechanism handles the exception, it terminates the program rather than completing it, right? So as your exception handling is handling arithmetic exception, but the exception occurred is of type index out of bound, you fail to catch it, the program got terminated and the exception got reported by Java environment, which is again print stack trace. Main method has called data and data line number 21 has an exception. What you can do is you can put a cache block here. You can put a cache block here. We call it as chaining. Also, there is other way. What you can do is you can call try. In the main method itself, you can see you can put try. And you can put a cache block here generalized catch block for any kind of exception. Now, if you compile the program and run it, still you get the main method, the last method and the exact array index out of bound exception. See, your data method strike catch block is not handling array index out of bound, but the data method itself is called in a try and catch block of the main method. So the data method reported Array index out of bound exception, which got printed on the screen, right? Now let's see another style. Try catch. And let's say I want this line. Let's say the user did not uh, include this catch exception block at the programmer has handled only arithmetic exception. Programmer has handled only arithmetic exception. And you have this crucial line which has to execute, which has to be executed, right, at any cost. So what you can do is there is a finally clause, finally clause, which I will put here. Now finally block or clause has to be associated with the try block. There is no need to write a catch block. You can directly write try and finally that is fine. So I have to write finally and then write the code what the code that I want to execute. For example, the last line or I should write here the finally block. The finally block. Now see the exception occurring is of array index out of bound type. We are handling the arithmetic exception. So obviously the program is expected to abruptly stop. CLS, Java C, first dot Java, Java first. So program abruptly stopped, but here is one change. You can see that the finally block call has executed. So that is the beauty of the finally block. That finally block will always execute whether exception occurs or exception do not occur. For example, let me put this exception commit condition in the commented box. Let me comment this a of one line. Now there will be no exception in the program. Let me compile and let me run this. So you can see that the main method and the finally block got executed. Let's create an exception in the program. Let's save this and again compile and run. So again, the final block is executed as well as the exception condition or the exception message is printed on the screen. So the finally block is guaranteed to execution despite the exception occurs or exception do not occur. What will be the best example why the finally block is needed is take an example of an ATM machine. Like you went, you, uh, you did go to the ATM machine with your card. You swapped your card. You entered the amount that uh, you entered the pin and amount that you want to get. The amount got debited from the account, your account, bank account, and before the money could get dispensed, the electricity failed or the ATM machine failed and you did not receive the cash. Now in this case, the money is already debited from your account, but the cash is not dispensed and you are not able to get it. In this case, you are in trouble 
because bank has already debited the money from your account. So what the programmer has to do is put the this code in a finally block. Like it has to make sure that this is a transaction, either it completely executes it or it do not execute at all. So what the uh, what the finally code should be if the money is not dispensed, please credit the money back to the customer's account. So that code has to go into the finally block. If other condition or reverse side, like you swapped the ATM card, the money got dispensed, but the, before ATM could fire a debit instruction to your account, the electricity failed. Now here you are in benefit. Like you entered, you swiped your card, you got the money. The money was dispensed by the ATM machine, but the message that ATM machine is supposed to trigger to the bank account, like the money has been debited before that network failed or ATM machine itself failed and the message could not be passed on to your bank. Now here, what has happened is you got the money, but message has not been received by the bank. Again, the finally clause has to come in picture and it has to make sure that this code executes at any cost, right? And the code should be like, if you have received the money, the transaction should be marked as successful and your bank will be debited by that much amount. So this mission critical code, which is supposed to make sure that the smooth transaction execution or uh, consistency of a data or consistency of uh, some file or consistency of some array, that kind of code has to go inside the finally block. And environment will make sure that the finally block will execute whether the exception occurs in try block or the exception do not occur in try block. Here, mark my word, I'm using word exception occurs in a try block or exception do not occurs in a try block, the finally block is expected to execute, right? So here I'm saying that the exception occurs in a try block or do not occurs in a try block, the finally is going to execute. What if the exception occurs in a finally block itself? The program will terminate. Remember this. So many times I have seen student answering that the finally block executes at any cost because this is the wording used by the uh, documentation and this is the wording used by the book that finally block executes at all the cost. That is true. Finally block executes at all the cost only if the exception is occurring inside try block. But if the finally block itself is generating the error one by zero, in this case, the program is going to terminate. Not a statement right now. I'm fine. So let me put use the variables. Let me use the variables. I is equal to I is equal to I by K. I guess the variables are not available. Okay, I the variables are not available. Let me declare this variable in the method rather than in the class try catch. Now Java first. See, now the finally block did not execute. Why finally block did not execute? Because finally block itself ran into an exception. So if this happened, finally block will terminate, right? So remember, this is the pretty much common question during the campuses during the exam that uh, finally block will execute always. The answer is true, but only if the finally block itself do not have exception condition. The the question flow goes in this style. Uh, whether exception occurs or do not occurs, the finally executes. It is it true or false? The answer is 100% true. Of course, it executes. Then the immediate next question comes in. What will happen if there is a code in the finally which will create exception? 90% of the student always answers that the finally will execute always. But that is not true. If there is a code in the finally which is creating exception in that case the finally block will fail remember this right so the very perfect statement is finally block will execute only if the try block have exception or do not have exception if your catch block runs into the exception or finally itself runs into the exception then finally block do not execute this condition may be because of errors runtime errors like a device failure, like something goes beyond the control of your program, memory failure or resource failure, that condition may lead to your finally block failure. 
Okay, any questions? Because I'm going to conduct a small poll and we are going to end this session. So any doubts, post your doubts in the chat box so you can raise hand if you have a doubt or else I'll, I'll create an immediate poll. Okay, nobody has raised a hand. So this is the poll and after poll we will end. We will discuss the results and then we'll end the session. Let me take a poll. Okay, by the way, in the next session, we are going to continue with the uh, try and catch mechanism because we haven't explored all explored all the features of try and catch. So in the next session also, we are going to explore this exception handling mechanism. So let me take a new poll. Quick poll. So today is 11. No, today is 12. 31. The poll is available. Give you responses. So here you can see that, let me share the results. Okay, so it's really nice to see that 84% of the people have got the correct answer. And it's a, it was a very question, like a simple question, like finally block executes if try runs or do not runs in exception. That is true, right? So it was a pinpointed question. If I've changed this question in a different style, like finally block executes always. And if I put just only two options, true or false, then probably that may be false, right? Because if something goes wrong inside final itself, then the program is going to terminate. But really nice to see that the people have selected the correct answer. So in the next session, we are going to see explore some more things about exceptions, like creating our creating our own exception class, how the exception uh, are been handled. Like what there is there is something on concept called as a throws and throwable and uh, throw the exception. So uh, you can recall from the cloning mechanism, there was a line that we have used something called as uh, 
clone not supported is exception throws clone not supported exception before writing the function right so we are going to understand what is the meaning of throws uh, through and other uh, words and how the exception object is prepared and how to create our own exception class this all we will do in the next session so you can leave the meeting thank you